Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy Netta Battling Belgian and welcome back to XCOM 2, the Valkyrie playthrough where we only deploy female soldiers. In today's mission, Operation Little Mist, we're going on a Haven assault mission. Well, we're not the ones assaulting the Haven, we're gonna be defending the Haven from a Haven assault and we're going on a retaliation strike with uh, Sparky, Heidi, Christina, Emily, Kelly, I lost my train of thought there for a second, and Elizabeth. And uh, yeah, that means we're going on a on a mission with three rangers. Um, hell yeah, I, that's all I want to say. Hell yeah. I feel like this might be another quick mission. Uh, our Valkyries have become so strong that a retali retaliation mission like this will not pose any trouble. The two rangers I've brought are mostly used for the chrysalids. ...encampment in this area. Our people are doing what they can to fight back, but we need to help protect the civilians trapped nearby. So there they are. There's a group of resistance soldiers hunkered down not far from your position. Move in and help fend off the attacking alien forces. So they're looking towards the north. Seems like we get a bit of their sightlines as well. But... Uh, the three ranges we're taking with us, we've taken with us, are gonna be the front line here. So Heidi goes in first and takes a look. There's no time to waste on this one, so uh, let's just move up. Well, not that slowly, and I'll see you guys in a second. I move every everybody up very aggressively in the first turn. And we spot an Archon and a Codex. I don't think anybody was on Overwatch, sadly. So that's what we're going to have to deal with. And there's chrysalids on the left. Fine. That's all fine. Those guys are coming in. And they're going straight for the civilians, it seems. But of course, those uh, civilians have resistance fighters with them. So they're going to start firing at the chrysalids in this case. Which is completely unnecessary because we can take them out in one go. So please focus your fire on the Archon if you want to. There you go. Please not on the Codex. No, that's gonna just make... Yeah, that's that's problematic. That's more... Okay. Well, that clone really, really wants to die. Oh, and those resistance fighters get a turn as well. Oh, and we get another Cell and Klein poster. That is so sad. Because Alessia is still dead. Okay, that one Codex for some reason really, really wants to die. I mean, I don't mind. I'll kill it. But it's a, it's a bit weird that it just wants to die like that. Uh, so two... Hmm. I could probably slash this chrysalid over here with Heidi. But Heidi also has the highest damage potential, of course. But Elizabeth, Elizabeth, you might actually be the perfect woman to have another slash at one of the Archons. But first things first, we have a few reflex shots. Uh, first lightning hand shot is on... Yeah, the Codex. 100% that's gonna kill him. That even was a critical, which is really, really good. Then we have a 77% chance shot at the chrysalid, but if we hit, we kill it. Because of the dragon rounds, and it ignores armor. There we go. And that gives us one more shot. And I can even fire my sniper rifle if I want to. Um, that sounds like a plan. Yeah, let's hit the Archon. Might be a graze, but at least we got some damage. Ooh, yeah, he's... He's uh, not looking good, which means I think that's the perfect opportunity for Elizabeth, Elizabeth Davis, to have a sword slash. Ooh, she doesn't have the 100% hit chances, but here we go. A slashing, slashing, slashing. There we go. It was a dodge, but not enough to uh, survive a sword slash. So that's really, really good. So if I'm able to get close enough to that codex, I might be able to get a nice shoulder on him. Ah, the open spaces, the fresh air. There we go. And then fire at the codex with a 72% shot. And that's a kill. 
which means that Heidi is free to go and slash the chrysalid, which is a guaranteed kill because the uh, katana ignores armor if Heidi wants to get moving. That sometimes takes a while. There we go. <laughs> the game is waking up. Hope, hopefully you guys playing on the Switch don't have the same issues, but uh, this game still has its issues. There we go. First two batches taking out in style. The resistance team is in the clear. They're moving to help the other survivors. There's a large group of civilians pinned down within range of your position. Sensors indicate hostile forces are closing in fast. We need to get in there before the aliens slaughter those people. Okay, so there we go. We get implacable, so might as well move up just a little bit. If we spot something, yeah, okay. She has untouchable, it's manageable. Uh, looks like we're not seeing anything, so Emily should push up as well, and I'll see you guys in a second. And the resistance fighters take their turn, and we're clearly... Yeah, they're clearly firing at something. A chrysalid on the right side over there. So they're probably now waking up, which means they get to move up a little bit. But ooh, we almost killed that one. Now we have a resistance fighter on the left as well, firing at a berserker. Yeah, again, I, I don't feel like this is going to take long. They have a really good grasp on everything, so... Uh, might as well move up with the rangers, see if we can spot something already. And take a shot at it. Um, at least get us in a good position to start firing away. So Heidi goes over there. She does not spot anything at the moment. She can use the grappling hook, but probably to go on the the roof of the building over here. Nothing, no, nothing a little bit further. Although, this seems like, yeah, she can actually go over here. That is going to bring her a bit too far, I feel like. So I'm just going to keep it over there. I will do one more round of overwatches, unless I spot something if I push Emily forwards. I could do that. Stepping off. And I am doing that. <laughs> I mean, she has Bladestorm, and for now, it's been uh, melee users. So yeah, I'm just going to push everybody up. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys in another turn. Although, no, oh, I thought Kelly spotted something. See you in a second. And one of the civilians in the batch turns into a faceless. But I have Heidi on Overwatch, so I don't think that faceless is going to live long. Because if he's going to move, is he just going to attack civilians in one go? Doesn't seem like it just yet. Maybe the resistance fighters can take him out. They're on their way. They're doing that very nicely. Would this be the first... I'm going to shut up. I was going to say, <laughs> this is, is going to be the first retaliation mission we finish without a single civilian casualty. But I don't think it will be. Unless... Uh... Nope. They miss. There's another one available. Ah, it does, it seems like, yeah, the, not every resistance fighter gets a turn, which is interesting. Um, seems like the game is freezing up again, okay. So that basis is definitely going to die, even, yeah, it might even be from a tickle if I uh, get too close. But, let's use Heidi first. Heidi has the biggest movement range, that's not Heidi. Um, although, you know what, Alessia also doesn't, Alessia, no, not Alessia, Alessia's dead, god damn it, she was also a sharpshooter, but Christina has the range, actually, because I can use the grappling hook, can I use that same range to get on top, no, I can't, which is interesting, uh, I'll move her up once, to see what happens, That doesn't do anything. Okay. Now maybe I should use Heidi's grapple to now get on top of the truck here. Want to take a look. Seems like the biggest enemies are already dead. Um, ooh, we still don't spot anything. That is interesting. Because um, that one guy is going to die because of a... A sword strike, or maybe just a shotgun blast, because I, I don't really want to risk this. Position confirmed. So let's put Elizabeth closer. 
and fire at the faceless Lamo. Hope, hope I didn't kill any of the civilians with that, because the, the corpse, the big floppy corpse, just uh, fell over into that bunch of civilians. Um, now, let's move Emily to the side here. We know there's a berserker on that side. If we can spot him, we don't. Okay then, then I'm just going to move up again. Oh, one of the civilians died because of burn damage. That is annoying. Another chrysalid and berserker. And we missed the shotgun shot. I mean, yeah, civilian died, but not because of that. Ooh, two chrysalids. Two chrysalids. And that uh, one, yeah, okay, that one chrysalid that was almost dead. We get another shot from Emily here. And that is another miss. Yeah, shotguns aren't really good at doing overwatches. Enemy is still up. But uh, yeah, that's all manageable. I hear another codex flipping around. Yeah, there we go. Codex and... Ooh, two codexes and a berserker. So that means that there are three berserkers on the field. And we got another uh, shot from the sniper rifle here. That should hit. There we go. 10 damage and burning on the berserker. He could definitely use that. And then that final berserker is also going to pop into the spotlight probably. Yeah, with the specter. I think that was two Spectres. Yeah, I might have been a bit too enthusiastic here. But Sparky gets an Overwatch shot. And it's a hit. That is really good. And we get another Overwatch shot from Kelly. That might actually kill it. Is it dead? Oh, she gets Guardian so she can hit him again. I think she can hit him again. Okay, we're waiting in full anticipation here. There's definitely Spectres moving around. And Kelly, does she get her second shot? No. Okay, but the Resistance get a, get a shot. Yeah, if any of those shoot at that Berserker, he's dead. There we go. Bye-bye. Sadly, we, we don't get the experience for that, but it's uh, good either way. Six damage on that Berserker. And another shot at... I mean, we could have taken those out. Please weaken the Berserkers a bit more. Or the Spectre. And we got... Yeah, that's a good one to, to weaken. There we go. Because I'm going to use Reaper next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be mad all you want. And then another Resistance Fighter firing at one of the Codexes. Probably that's less good. That is less good, but... Oh no, he fires at the Berserker as well. Okay, that changes things a little bit. Now I have a plan. It's probably not going to be a good plan. But I have a plan. So. We have Sparky with the Blaster Bomb still. At least I think he has the Blaster Bomb. M might be that she's carrying the Shredstorm Cannon. I'm not exactly sure. But we have a few ways of dealing massive amounts of damage. And I'm definitely going to use all of them. So the Blaster Bomb can do up to 12 damage. I'm going to put him on... Put Sparky on Overdrive. Which means that I can get one Blaster Bomb off. And then move and then do a shot. So Blaster Bomb first. That's going to hit a massive area. And I'm just looking... No, I can't hit the Spectre and the Codexes over here. So I'm going to focus on the Codexes. I should probably be careful not to take down the building with it. Because uh, if I do that, I might just risk... Yeah, I might just risk killing that civilian up there. So let's use the blaster bomb. Just around the corner. I'm blowing down at least the berserker and hopefully... Ooh, no. Nope. nope. I heard both of the codexes, so they both clone. Um, and we got, yeah, two teleports, but that's actually not that bad. Okay, with that, we have only those shots, but if I move Sparky over here, if the game wants to follow along, because there are, like, way too many enemies at the moment, <laughs> the game is freezing up again. Uh, that gives us a flank shot 
all the codex. And a shot at something explosive. No, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, let's fire at the Spectre. There we go, 10 damage. The maximum amount. Damn. Uh, I think, where can I go with the grappling hook? Can I go up this building? No. I think, if I move Christina over here... I should get sight of the sight of that container enough so I can grapple up there now. Damn it. Um, then I'm gonna have to see what happens if I put it over here. I don't have a lightning reflexes shot, but I do see five targets, which means that with face off, this might end badly for the aliens. There we go. Fire once. That's a kill. That's another kill. That's another kill. And that's another kill. <laughs> ah, face off is the best. That was awesome. Um, okay. That takes care of the Codexes, the Berserker, one of the Spectres. Where's that other Spectre, by the way? I don't see it at the moment. And that worries me just, just a teensy little bit. Um... Let's go into Reaper mode. There we go. And then just slash at the uh, Chrysalid. There we go. I'm hoping by running around that I kind of, kind of spot the uh, Spectre. But for now it seems like we only see the Berserk. Oh wow, we don't see the Berserk anymore. Okay, which means... That we need to move Kelly over here. Sure thing. So we spot that Berserker again. There it is. Then. Can. Huh. I don't have running gun on uh, Elizabeth just yet. Which is sad, but I can put it up here, which gives her a height advantage. Height advantage should be enough. To give her a nice shot on that Berserker. Yeah, 100%. Blamo, even a critical. That's 12 damage. And that means that with another Sword Slash, we can take out the Berserker over here. Heidi has Untouchable, so even if the Berserker retaliates... There we go. He won't be able to. Then... Oh, wait. Okay, I see the Spectre. That's good. That's good. Um, so the Spectre is hiding behind here, which means that with, yeah, with Emily, I can, I don't even need to trigger a uh, running gun. There we go. Now, how the hell is that not a flank shot? Oh, it's not. Yeah, it's definitely not because uh, he's hiding behind those, those pallets, so to speak. Uh, so let's just use running gun anyway. Running gun. Um, put it over here. And then let her rapid fire at the Spectre. And if that kills, this will have been the fastest retaliation mission ever. Blamo. I think that's the last of them. I've been counting. There we go. You secured the remaining civilians and there are no other hostile contacts on the scope. Good work out there. 16 enemies killed in a retaliation mission, only lost one civilian and only took five turns. That is, yeah, that's as flawless as we're gonna get. Let's give our Valkyries a well-earned rest after that one. That was, uh, yeah, that was perfect. I can't complain. Every single one of these ladies has pulled their weight. And even uh, Elizabeth got a few kills there. She got two kills, which gives her a promotion. And that should give her, there we go, running again. That was uh, what we definitely needed. And now we got, yeah, 18 rescued civilians, increasing the income uh, by 5 each, if I recall correctly. So that's 90 supplies. 3 codex brains, crystal corpses, archon corpse, faces corpse, berserker corpses, and spectre corpses. All nice. So that's only 3 supplies per, um, yeah, that's, that's not, not that good. So four, 54 supplies, which is still rather a lot so that brings us back to 786 by the way does anybody know why my income keeps dropping because that has been over 800 at a certain point and right now it's below 800 even though we just got a boost of 54 maybe that's because of the scilab 
that gives me an extra cost. So we're doing data path decryption at the moment. So let's finish that up. There we go. 48 Intel. Uh, I don't, do we get... We probably don't have anything anymore. Yeah, alien data caches, but I'm not going to. I'm going to push the story forward. Um, leave anyway. So researching the Avatar Corpse is our last action. That's going to end the game because this is basically we're in the end game right now. So um, we're going to wrap up a few more missions, but we're really getting close to the end of this playthrough. Um, but let's first research the Psionic Gate. That's going to take seven days, which should be enough to get everybody uh, back up and running. There we go. Psionic training a complete on Mutanaka. She gets solace. And we're going to continue that training because she can get a few nice abilities as well. If an enemy is carrying explosives, they can be remotely detonated by the Psy operative. Yes, definitely yes. And there we get two Illyrium cores. But word from the medical team is they'll all be fine. There we go. Illyrium cores times two. And we get a new one. And we'll go for modular cannons and that should give uh, Elizabeth an extra bit of mobility and allows us to uh, add an additional upgrade slot to all cannons. And there we get an advanced laser sight from the assorted loot. It's not as good as I thought it was going to be. Um, so let's take a look at what else we can scan at because the options are extremely limited at the moment. So since I either get power or contacts, both of which I don't need anymore, I'm just going to go to the Reaper HQ and check that out. And I'm an idiot because I of course need to make the rage suit now that I have those Illyrium cores. There we go. Rage suit. Four days. Four days. I really want that. I really, really want that. So I'm just going to wait until we get that. So I'm just gonna go to Reaper HQ to gain intel. And then we get a guerrilla operation before we even complete the Sionic Gate, which is, okay, fair enough. We'll deal with that first. They're all gonna die anyway. I'll go with Operation Precious Whale in West Asia. So very difficult with Archon, Elite Priest, Elite Shield Bay, Elite Trooper, Gatekeeper, Spectre, Codex, and Elite Lancer, which is, Fair, I guess. We got about 300 supplies and we countered the counterattack, which is uh, always nice. Oh, there we go. We upgraded. I just uh, bought the uh, upgrades for the uh, Hunter Axe and the Plasma Caster. And that gave us a trophy as well, which is really, really nice. And this is going to be our very peculiar squad for the next mission. I still want to have that trophy where I complete a mission with three spark units. So there we go. That's exactly what we're going to do next time. Going to do do? Yeah, going to do do next time. Uh, so we're going to take from right to left this time because I'm my cursor is over there and I'm just lazy as hell. Uh, Miyu, our uh, Psy operative, and want to see if we can upgrade her as well. Then Bulky, our new spark unit. Evie is back from the repair bay. Christina, of course, to have a bit more damage output along with Heidi. And then, of course, our trusty Sparky. So that's going to be the mission next time. We're going to go in stealthy. Stealthy? Stealthily. But uh, that's going to be for next time. So I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Exxon's Crew, the Valkyrie playthrough. And see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching and goodbye.